Hey, everyone. This is Peter from the Firebase team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with Firebase on iOS. And along the way, I will provide some interesting side notes and behind the scenes details that you might find useful. Speaking of which, did you know that you can use Firebase on Apple's other platforms as well? That's right. You can use most of Firebase's APIs in your iOS, iPadOS, macOS, tvOS, and watchOS applications. And we are continuously improving API coverage. So whenever I say your iOS app in this video, I mean all those platforms as well. All right, let's get into it. So here is a little sample app I created for demonstration purposes. Nothing too exciting. It's just a simple Swift UI app that lets the user enter their favorite number. This is currently stored locally, and I want to use Firebase to store this in the cloud. There are two main steps to connect your iOS app to Firebase, adding your app to the Firebase console and installing the SDK. To create a new project, head over to firebase.com and then click on the Go to Console button. On this screen, you will see an overview of all the Firebase projects you've created. I want to create a new project, so I'll click the Add Project button. Before we go any further, I want to take a moment to explain the difference between projects and apps. So the most important thing to know about a Firebase project is that you can connect one or more apps to it. All apps in the same Firebase project use the same resources. That means they will access the same Cloud Firestore, real-time database, Firebase authentication, and Cloud Storage backends. And you can view combined analytics data across all apps in the same project. This also means that you only have to configure these products once in the project settings, and it will take effect for all your apps. The most common case is that you've got versions of the same app on different platforms. Many apps are available on iOS, Android, and the web. But you might also have multiple iOS apps that all need access to the same data. For these scenarios, we recommend connecting all those apps to the same Firebase project. This way, your users can access the same data if they use your app on both their iPhone and the web. On the other hand, if your apps are different and you don't need to share data between them, you should definitely put those in different Firebase projects. So this is just a high-level overview of how Firebase projects work, and there is a lot more you should know. For example, did you know that every Firebase project is also a Google Cloud project? This makes it super easy to add Google Cloud's powerful features to your Firebase app. My colleague Marina recently recorded an entire video about how Firebase projects work, and you should definitely check it out. The link is in the description below. So if your Android or web team has already created a Firebase project for your app, you should probably select that project and add your app to it. If you don't see the project in the Firebase console, then go ahead and ask your teammates to invite you to the project. But if you're the first one to be adding Firebase capabilities to your project, well, lucky you. You get to be the one to create the new Firebase project, and that's what I'm going to do here. So after clicking on the Add Project button, you will see this screen where you can enter the name of your project. I can type a name, but you might notice this drop-down box beneath the name. This gives you the option to add Firebase to an already existing Google Cloud project that you have access to. The Google Cloud project will retain all its current capabilities while adding in the new services needed for Firebase. So if you're working on a project that has already been set up through Google Cloud, make sure you pick that and don't create a new Firebase project. Me, I'm creating a brand new project, so I'll type in a new name. You can see that it is giving me this ID string that updates as I type. This is the project ID, which is a globally unique identifier for your project across Firebase and Google Cloud. I click on the Continue button, and now I get to choose whether or not to add Google Analytics to my project. Enabling Analytics will allow me to use a number of useful features, such as A-B testing, running Firebase predictions, and getting crash-free user reports. If I don't enable Analytics, I won't be able to use those features. Enabling is totally optional, but I don't want to miss out on those cool features, so I will keep Analytics enabled. Since I decided to enable Analytics for my project, I will have to associate this project with an account. 
Now, an account isn't an account like a Gmail account or anything like that. It's really just like a folder of analytics projects. It's mostly there for organizational purposes. Some developers like to have separate accounts for each project, but I like to keep mine in one folder, so I'll pick this now. I can now proceed to the next step, which is to actually create the new Firebase project. Firebase works in the background to set up the project and provision all the required resources. And after a moment or so, I'll have a shiny new project to work with. I'll click on Continue, which will take me to the project overview page of the Firebase console. All right, so this is my new Firebase project, but it is still a bit empty here since I haven't yet added any apps to it. So I will click on the iOS Plus icon here, and now there are a bunch of fields for me to fill out. First, I need to enter the bundle ID of my app. You can find this in Xcode by selecting the root of your project in the Project Navigator and then clicking on the target. Go to the General tab, and you will find the bundle identifier in the Identity group. In my case, it is dev.peterfreeze.favorites. So I will copy this and then head back to the Firebase console and paste it into the Apple bundle ID field. The next two fields are optional. Feel free to give your app a nickname so it's easier to find it later. The App Store ID is used by Firebase Dynamic Links to redirect users to your App Store page, and you can always fill this in later in the project settings. Let's move on to the next step to download this plist file. This file contains a bunch of configuration settings that the Firebase SDK will later use to connect to your Firebase project. So I'll download this file and then drag it into my Xcode project. I usually drop it right beneath the Assets catalog, like so. It's important to make sure that this file is exactly named Google Services info.plist. So if there is a number in the file because you downloaded one earlier, just rename the file right in Xcode. If you look at this file, you can see that it contains a bunch of settings that the Firebase SDK needs to configure itself correctly and connect to the Firebase project we just created. For example, here is the ID of my project, the cloud storage bucket I might use, some OAuth client IDs, and so on. None of this is secret, but you should really only share this file with your team. For example, if you're making an open source demo app that you want to share publicly, you want to make sure other people who try out your project use their own version of this file to connect to their own Firebase project. So that was the first step, creating a Firebase project and adding your app to it. Back in the Firebase console, we can see that the next step is to add the Firebase SDK to your iOS project. Swift Package Manager is the preferred way to add Firebase to an iOS project, but you can still use CocoaPods or our zip file distribution if your team hasn't made the transition to SPM yet. Let me copy the package URL and then go back into Xcode and add the Firebase package to my project. There are a couple of ways to do this. For example, you can go to the package dependencies of your project in the project settings or use the file menu. I'll use the context menu of the project and then select Add Packages. In the dialog that appears, I paste the URL to the Firebase SDK package into the search field. And now I can see the readme of the Firebase SDK. Using the dependency rule, I can now define which version of the Firebase SDK I'd like to use in my app. For production apps, I would recommend using the up to next major version setting. Xcode will automatically populate a lower and upper bound for the version. This will make sure you always get the latest stable version of the Firebase SDK up to the next major version. Click on Add Package to let Xcode download the package and its dependencies. This might take a moment, depending on your network speed. Once this is finished, Xcode will present a list of all the Firebase libraries that are available. For now, I will pick just Firebase Analytics and Firebase Analytics Swift. Keep in mind that Xcode will add these to the active target only. So if you've got more than one target in your project, you will have to add them to the other targets manually. The next step is to configure Firebase. So let's head back to the Firebase console and see what we need to do. 
So here you can see the code that is required for Swift UI or UIKit with Swift. And if your app is written in Objective-C, or if you just happen to really like square brackets, there's a code snippet for that as well. My app uses Swift UI, so I'll go ahead and copy this chunk of code here, and then head back over to Xcode. So my app makes use of the new Swift UI application lifecycle that Apple introduced a while ago. The main difference is that apps using this new lifecycle don't have an app delegate anymore. But when I paste the code I just copied, you will notice that this is literally an app delegate. But not to worry, Apple has also provided us with a way to use an app delegate with this new lifecycle model. All we have to do is register our app delegate using the add app delegate adapter. If you'd like to learn more about this, check out these two blog posts I wrote about the SwiftUI lifecycle and what it means for Firebase. With this in place, we can finish the flow in a console and then launch the app to verify we've completed all the required steps. Once the app has started, we can see some output in Xcode's log console. You should see one line saying, analytics version so-and-so started, and then soon after, another one saying, analytics collection enabled. If you forgot to add the Google services info.plist file, Firebase will issue an error saying, could not locate configuration file google services info.plist and then crash. Yeah, that file is so important that we'd rather not launch the application than just you know try to work without the file. Now that you've connected your app to Firebase, you can start using Firebase services in your app. But first, you might need to link the respective module and import it into your source code file. So let me give you a quick example and show you how can, you can use analytics to track when a user visits a specific screen in your app. Firebase has a really cool Swift UI view modifier that makes this super easy. To use it, we first need to add the Firebase Analytics Swift library. Now, you will remember that I already did this in the beginning, but just for the sake of the argument, let me remove it and then add it again so you can see how it is done. Next, I go back into the view I want to track and import Firebase Analytics Swift. Once that's done, I can go to my view implementation and apply the analytics screen view modifier to my screen. The next time this view appears, the Firebase Analytics SDK will send a screen view event to analytics. Before running the app again, I will enable debug mode for analytics so we can see the events in the debug view. Once the app is running again, let's go to the Firebase console and check the analytics debug view. And sure enough, here is the screen view event. And when I click on the Firebase screen parameter, I can see the screen name that I provided in my source code. Sweet. All right. So now that you've added Firebase to your app, you can start using all the other services that Firebase offers. For example, you can store, query, and sync data from the cloud using Cloud Firestore, our horizontally scaling document-based NoSQL database in the cloud. Or you could use Firebase Authentication to easily sign in users using sign-in mechanisms such as sign-in with Apple, Google Sign-in, or email and link authentication. In this video, we had a quick look at analytics, but it can do a lot more. For example, you can use it to record custom events and user properties, and then combine this with remote config to run A-B tests or personalize your app. Or you can add Crashlytics to your project to pin down how to track crashes and increase the stability of your app, and much, much more. If you like this kind of video, Subscribe to our channel because there are a bunch of other videos about Firebase and iOS coming out in the next couple of weeks. Have fun creating, and I will see you soon on another episode of Firebase Fundamentals. Mm -hmm.